five running mistakes beginners should avoid. Mistake number one, overtraining. Overtraining exists not only in running, but in other categories, boxing, soccer, powerlifting, bodybuilding, you name it. Overtraining is extremely common and you should avoid it at all costs. What does that look like and what does that feel like? Well, it happened to me a few days ago. My legs weren't snappy, sluggish. It, I'm not kicking. I'm trying very hard for my legs to respond. They're not responding. I'm not feeling like I'm hitting my pace. I feel fatigued. I feel extremely tired. My whole body, not just my legs, feels like, okay, I, I just want to stop. That's usually how overtraining looks like. And I knew that because I, I was swimming a lot. I was boxing a lot. I was cycling a lot on top of my running. So there comes to a point where you're going to feel that there's a lot of load. And you're not putting the same amount of effort that you're used to feeling forward. That's when you should kind of step back a little bit and say, okay, where can I take away instead of doing a one hour swim? I'll cut it down to 30 minutes, you know, just so I'm able to at least put my body in a better place. Okay, I'm cycling for two hours. Let's cut down to one hour. Okay, what's important to you running, right? Okay, cool. Anything else? Whatever else I'm doing, if I'm boxing for two hours, if I'm cycling for an hour and a half, if I'm doing anything else, you got to cut down a little bit in order to focus on your running. And if you're doing any other activities on top of that, like work, like most of us, then you got to include that. If you're a construction worker, I know what that looks like. And you're still doing all these activities and you're not prioritizing your runs how you sh like how you should and you're waking up early. I mean, that load is going to add up very, very quickly. So make sure you're taking the adequate steps. You have a coach that's going to give you a program that is not all speed all the time. That's properly well balanced when tempo, easy runs, you know, VO2 max. And that is going to help you to maintain a really good load so you won't lead into overtraining. Mistake number two, hydration neglect. Most of us, like myself, we think hydration is just water. It is not just water. It's becoming more relevant in social media platforms and on YouTube that hydration is electrolytes. And what are those composed out of? What does that protocol look like? Sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Those are your true hydration elements that you should be consuming in order for your body to perform at its peak. Look, when we sweat, we're excreting sodium. So when you taste your sweat, it tastes salty. You need to replenish that, right? So your body is excreting that. And it's using all those elements in order to maintain proper energy levels in order for you to finish your workout or to begin your workout. Plain and simple. I do about less than a liter of water by itself. It is very important to drink water by itself. But I take about a liter and a half to two of electrolytes even during my workouts, before my workouts, during my workouts, and after my workouts. I got to make sure that I'm properly hydrated and there's no such thing as over hydration, right? Like whatever your body doesn't need, it's going to excrete it. It's just going to get rid of it going through uh, to the restroom. That's it. But you don't want to feel that, oh, I have so many liquids. I can't even train. That is the limitation, right? You got to everybody's protocol is very different. I sweat buckets. I my protocol is probably very different than yours. So you have to see what works for you, what company you want to go with, what hydration formula you want to go with. What's a priority? What's not? Do you want to include sugar like liquid IV? Do you just want to have sodium, blah, blah, blah. But then again, potassium is very important for cramps. So make sure that's well balanced. Mistake number three, ignoring recovery. Let me tell you, that will lead into and bleed into overtraining. If you ignore recovery and just train seven days a week and you get pumped Say, you know, seeing David Goggins train day in and day out, that's great. You're going to get to a point where you could train all day, every day, you know, like you've already 
constructed a training program that allows you to kind of rest and still put in an enormous amount of effort forward. Yes, but when you're beginning, okay, as a beginner, when I first started, I needed to take so many days off, you know, especially after my long runs. I'm like, how in the world am I going to do an easy run after long run? My hips hurt. My ankles hurt. My hamstrings hurt. My quads hurt. Like to the point where I could even barely move my legs. Yes, it's extremely painful when you're just starting. And you're driving yourself crazy because you see all these people like myself or other people on the platform, they're training like day in and day out. What in the world? Hence, a coach that allows you to, well, one, myself, I could guide you through. You could hit me up on Instagram. Um, that would allow you to set a structure that is not only all about speed, like I said, but it's a well-balanced program. You're not ignoring active recovery. Like, you're still training. You're still putting some effort forward, but it's at about 30%, 40%. We need to mediate, like, okay, the load. Not load it up all the time, all day, every day, because then you're going to say, why? This is not even fun. I'm not even seeing results. That's what it's going to lead to. So make sure you respect your recovery. Mistake number four, skipping your warm-up and your cool-down. That is extremely important in order to avoid injuries. You can't just hit the track hot and ready. No, you got to warm up at least 10 minutes and then stop, stretch and go. So about 20 minutes right before your actual main set, you need to make sure you're properly warmed up. So you're not pulling your hamstring, your quads, your calves or you're having any type of injury that requires surgery. You want to avoid that as much as possible by incorporating a warm up and a cool down. You can't just pump the brakes, you know, coming in high, uh, 170 beats per minute and then be like, OK, I'm done. I'm leaving home. Absolutely not. You got to make sure that you're elevating your heart rate very smoothly and then you got to dip down very smoothly, completely sealing that training and making the most out of it by warming up and cooling down. Mistake number five, setting unrealistic goals. We all want to get to a sub three in most cases. When we first begin, even in half marathons, we want to do a sub two hour, a sub 145, a sub 130, a sub 120. Whatever the case is, you have to be re really, really realistic with your goals. You can't just go from a 340 marathon to a sub three. Absolutely not within a year. That's just not going to happen. Seriously, it's not. There's things that they're extremely unrealistic that are going to put you in a really bad place mentally, physically, emotionally, saying what is going on. I see all these people accomplishing all these things, but they're doing it full time. You got to know that. And, and split the difference of I have a full time job. I'm just starting. I'm loving this. I want to commit to setting some goals, set them realistically. You know, within six months, I want to drop a couple of seconds up to a minute. But that requires effort, your meals, your sleep, everything. Right. That's got to be placed. Your coaching, your program, everything needs to line up. And yes. Those are very realistic goals. Even nine months to a year. Okay, cool. I want to cut down my half marathon from a 145 to 138. That's pretty damn realistic, even if you have a full-time job. If you're doing this full-time, oh, piece of cake within a year? Yes, let's go. You know, but you got to train every day. You got to make sure you're resting. You got to make sure you're not burning out. You're not overtraining. You're hydrating. You know, you're doing all these things and the results will follow. But just make sure you don't let yourself down and saying, oh, I'm running a 340. Hmm. Within six months, I'm going to try to do a sub three hour. Bro, no, you're going to set up yourself for failure um, and you're going to put yourself in a really bad pocket. So we want to enjoy this. We want to make sure that we're still continuously making progress, but enjoying it. We're pushing ourselves to things that are extremely realistic within a few months span or even within a year. So that is it for today, guys. I hope you like this video. Like, subscribe, comment. If you have any questions, if you want anything you want me to cover, 
Drop it down below. Catch you guys later. Peace.